Hello everybody, this is Dumpster Cats. Welcome back to another Pioneer video. In this one, we're going to be doing some deck building on Glissa, Sunslayer, a uh, card I'm very excited about. If you didn't watch my spoiler analysis video on her, I think that she's going to be very powerful, um, if not a mainstay in the archetype. I know I get really, really excited about cards like this, you know, Golgari, like powerful rares or mythics from the new sets. Um, and I have been very wrong and <laughs> incorrect about things in the past. Um, you know, Liliana of the Veil, of course, being the predominant one. But um, with Glissa, I think that she's, uh, I think there's more merit to testing her out. And I think that um, I could say with pretty, um, pretty good confidence that she's going to be at least something worth testing and will likely, or I guess I'll say maybe will be a mainstay in the archetype. We'll, we'll see it though. I think she definitely needs the correct build. And of course, we're going to go into that today. And so the list that you see before you is kind of derived from my Gigantha build that I've been running over the past few videos on this channel. Um, just kind of with Glissa thrown in there and some cuts here and there. Obviously with Gigantha, we're unable to play cards like Pack Leader, Shieldred, or Liliana of the Veil. Vale, but I don't think that's really to our detriment. I think that uh, just as is, but also with the addition of Glissa, we have a pretty nice kind of tempo focus going here where we're fo more focused on the early and mid game as we're trying to just get down our efficient creatures in the form of like trespasser grim flare tracker um interact with our opponent whether it be on the board or um, through their hand with thought seizes fatal pushes and especially abrupt decay i'm leveraging for abrupt decay over the two trophies um or over the four trophies, uh, which is pretty typical in BGX nowadays, just because this deck is more focused on getting or taking advantage of the opponent in the early game. Um, and then we obviously have the uh, the four vehicles here. I was running the full five, at least with the extra chariot uh, in my other build, but I think with Glissa, we have more in inevitability with just her card advantage. We still want to be attacking as her triggered ability um, get, goes on the stack whenever we deal combat damage to a player. And so obviously with that, we want to be attacking. Um, we have already you know, been wanting to do that in the archetype uh, as is, just as mid-range players. But I think that um, at least with just the inherent value that Glissa provides from being such a combat-oriented uh, creature, we really want to incentivize uh, maintaining a clear board on our opponent's side and really trying to just connect with Glissa as that's going to be kind of our main value engine in this deck. And now along the lines of Glissa's inherent card advantage that she provides, I've kind of morphed the deck into, I guess, less so of a tempo deck and more of just a traditional mid-range deck in the sense that I took out the Transmogrants in the two drop slot. I just think they weren't, weren't good enough and I think Bankbuster is just a better card. Uh, Rakdos leverages this card so, so, so unpowerfully. And so, you know, why can't us, especially as Gigantha just allows us to do so. Um, I'm also playing the third one in the sideboard, just because I think the card is so good. And I think that Bank Buster and just all the cards in this deck play well alongside Glissa uh, so much more. And I feel that way for a few reasons. The main one being, I feel like we're kind of, we're able to have more of a traditional styled mid-range deck um, with the inherent card advantage that she does provide for us. Um, Looking back at old BGX modern decks where they're leveraging Liliana the Veil, uh, Tireless Tracker main deck, and uh, cards like Dark Confinant to provide uh, just inevitability, uh, especially in the late game. Um, I think Glissa is obviously not as powerful as those, as those types of cards like Dark Confidant, um, and it's definitely not the healthiest mindset to have that kind of nostalgic point of view where we are, um, we may want to be more focused on trying to uh, derive our deck from old, you know, past decks, also in different formats as well. So it's really not the healthiest mindset to have. However, though, I think theoretically, at least in when we're talking about how mid range is supposed to be played out, um, just in the in the, the context of a, a, a match a match of magic, I think that Glissa makes sense, especially in a style of deck where it's a bit more aggressive. We have you know nine three drop creatures. We don't have any planeswalkers main deck. We have four vehicles, so of course we want to be attacking, um, but still is able to go a bit more into the late game than my previous builds with Gigantha have been able to do, at least I feel like just theor theoretically wise. Obviously, you know, everything I say in this video will be taken with a grain of salt as we still need to test Glissa and don't even know if she's going to be actually playable. But just theoretically, I think that with her card advantage, uh, same kind of same thing with Bankbuster, I think with her card advantage and her ability to 
uh, just be such a great creature in combat, I think that we're going to be able to go further into late game, which I think is just um, overall really good. Uh, you may have already found out, but the cuts I made for her were just one trap suppressor, uh, one tracker, and one chariot. So really not trimming much, just kind of trimming around the edges uh, here and there. Taking our consistency out just a bit, which I am a bit worried about, but cards like Briar Bridge Tracker are necessary and I think is the most or one of the most powerful three drops that we do have access to. Just isn't that powerful in certain matchups, obviously great in um, mid-range and aggressive decks or against aggress aggressive decks, but other than that really kind of uh, not the best against combo and control and um, really bad against mono green I have found as well. And so I don't really like the tracker, but I think that um, although we do lose consistency, like I said, I think adding the glisses in here um, like this makes a bit of sense just in terms of our sustained theme of being the aggressor in many matchups and just wanting to provide, or at least try to provide some uh, nice card advantage in the mid to late game. However, to provide some nuance to the conversation, you may be asking yourself, well, Dumpster Cat, if Glissa, like you say, is such an insane powerhouse in terms of providing card advantage and uh, pressuring your opponent, won't she also play well alongside already established cards like Liliana the Veil, Werewolf Pack Leader, or even Shieldred? And while I think largely those, those sentiments are valid and quite accurate, I feel like in the case of at least Liliana, um, if you didn't watch my, my spoiler analysis uh, for Glissa, I mentioned that I don't think she'll uh, play alongside Liliana just in terms of having to make the decision of leaving her back to guard Liliana is often a decision you don't want, want to have to make if you like each turn you want you will want to be uh, tapping Glissa and attacking with her, either getting inherent value with uh, killing your opponent's creatures obviously with her first strike and death touch, or just with the value of getting to connect with her, as that's going to be quite impactful. Um, so I don't think she's going to play well alongside Liliana. Along those lines, though, you, you know, you may be asking, well, Pack Leader wants to be attacking. Um, oh, why won't Glissa play well alongside him? And the answer to that question, quite honestly, just comes back to Jagantha. I think that Jagantha, in many ways, and I may, you know, change my opinion in the future, but at least how I feel now, I think that Jagantha, in many ways, is just better than having cards like Pack Leader and Children in your deck. And I don't think it's necessary to have cards like Pack Leader and Children in your BGX deck. I think that having access to Grimflare is just, you know, fine. Not great against cards like Stomp, uh, Dies to Fatal Push, things like that, Dies to Cart Burn spells as well. Um, but I think, you know, in terms of, at least with the pack leader conversation, I think with Gigantha, we obviously have to play Grimflare. And so with Grimflare over pack leader, I, you know, I actually kind of like him a bit better in this style of deck where we're more focused on wanting to have card selection. Obviously, Grimflare is great at doing that. Rather than necessarily say card advantage, obviously card advantage is going to be good either way. You know, we're playing cards like Big Buster and of course Glissa and, you know, Bridebridge Tracker to a lesser extent. But I feel like, at least I found in my last few leagues I've been playing, I think the card selection that Grimflare provides is actually quite crucial in the deck that wants to be leveraging its uh, interaction very efficiently and uh, at peak effectiveness. And so what I mean by that is, is that we want to focus more so on the just power level in terms of the timing that cards like Decay and Push and Trophy can be played. Obviously, like with cards like Trophy, it's just a generally good removal spell as compared to Decay, which is more specific. And, you know, this is a reason why we played for Trophy and two Decay in, in the past, or at least in other builds as well, um, just because Trophy is generally a better removal spell and just hits more targets than Decay does. However, um, and so, you know, in a, in a style where you want to play for Trophy, I think Pack Leader may be the better decision. However, in this more tempo style, aggressive oriented deck that has Grim Flare, as just in a great way of providing card selection, we are able to get a bit more specific in terms of leveraging uh, these more um, kind of niche, but more powerful and more effective cards uh, or manners of intera interaction, uh, like Decay, like Push, and of Th Thoughtseize, of course, and then just having the insurance of the late game trophy uh, once in a while. And kind of a more subliminal or maybe perhaps irrelevant point uh, as to why I don't like playing cards like Pack Leader or Shieldred is I just don't really like the play patterns that they usually come across or uh, provide. Less so with Pack Leader, but I think Shieldred is just a very boring and stale card to play. 
uh, both with and against. I think pack leader does have some more nuance, um, but I think just being like solely an aggressive threat is a bit boring, at least to me, and doesn't really have the BGX flavor or the flavor that I usually like when assessing cards, and I don't think you should be using um, that reasoning to justify you playing cards like Glissa, which definitely has the Golgari flavor, you know? Um, <laughs> but I think that, uh, I, ho I hope I made my point um, just clear enough in the sense that Grim Flayer plays well as alongside Gigantha, of course, and I think Gigantha is a really big upgrade for us, and just the card selection that he provides in uh, contrast to Pack Leader uh, plays more well alongside cards like Decay and Fatal Push, which I believe to be a bit more well-oriented in the format and just in the style of deck as a whole. And so with that, I think that kind of concludes this video. I hope you could kind of have some, I guess, restrained hype is a good way of uh, saying it in terms of Glissa and her perhaps uh, um, her potential applications into, into the archetype. I think that she's going to be a very powerful card, like I've been saying, but definitely need some testing. Um, and along those lines, definitely keep your eye out for videos in the future for my channel, as I will definitely be testing her once she is released and legal, as I think that she's going to be pretty cool. I, I think that at least um, of this style of deck, um, especially alongside Jagantha, I think that she's going to be awesome. I, I think that's just she's just another great reason to be uh, played alongside Jagantha and just to have Jagantha um, more of a <clears throat> potential mainstay in an archetype, which is pretty exciting in my opinion. With that being said, though, consider subscribing and liking the video. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.